Hey everyone. So in this video, I like to talk about the dot product. So we've talked about combining two vectors in a few different ways. We talked about adding sub and subtracting two vectors. Uh, let's say I've got the vector u is equal to uh, five comma two, where five is the horizontal component of this vector and two is the vertical component of this vector. And then let's say v is given by the vector uh, one comma four. Then adding these two vectors to get the vector u plus v, well, that just corresponds to adding their horizontal components together, right? So 5 plus 1, and then adding their vertical components together, 2 plus 4. So this gives us a new vector, uh, 6 comma 6. And so pictorially, uh, or geometrically, what's going on here when we add two vectors is if I've got my vector u here and my vector v here, then really adding them together is like stacking one on top of another, placing the initial point of one vector onto the terminal point of another, and then this corresponding vector here. This is what we're really looking at when we're thinking about the vector u plus v. And a similar picture can be made for subtracting two vectors. And so we also talked about scaling vectors, right? If I take my same vector above, uh, u is equal to five comma two. Well then the vector given by three times u just corresponds to uh, multiplying the component, uh, the horizontal component by three and then the vertical component by three as well. And so we get this new vector 15 comma, two, uh, not two, 15 comma six. And so let's say here's my vector u. Then three times u, all it's doing is stretching it out by a factor of three. So here, you know, this entire uh, black vector, this is what we can visualize when we say three times u. And so, Another meaningful way to combine two vectors is uh, through what's called the dot product. And so usually we'll denote this as, uh, we'll write u dot v. So this is, this is the dot product. And so here, if I have the vector u is equal to uh, a1 comma a2, those are its components, and v is the vector uh, b1 comma b2, there's actually two ways we can we, we define the dot product. So one way is if we have these two vectors, we just multiply their horizontal components together. I take a1 times b1, and then we multiply the, the vertical components together, a2 times b2, and then sum those. Right, so one thing I want you to notice here is that what we've gotten out is not a new vector, it's actually just a number. So the dot product takes two vectors and spits out or returns just a number. And then another way we've defined uh, the dot product u time or u dot v, uh, this gives you the same number. We're not gonna prove that uh, this gives you the same result. But this is another way to get the same value. So what we do is we take the magnitude of u, the magnitude of v, and multiply them together. So these are the lengths of u and v. And then multiply that, that result with cosine of the angle between them. So here, if, if u is maybe some vector out here, this is u, uh, v is some vector out here, then theta is this angle between the two vectors. So this is another way we can compute u dot v. So these two uh, procedures give you the same result, and this is a way of relating um, uh, the, the components of our two vectors to the angle between the two vectors. So really this is the value of this idea of the dot product, is, is usually we can use it to determine the angle between two vectors, which is a quite useful tool. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and compute the dot product of these two vectors here, u and v. So u dot v, uh, so all we do here is we take their horizontal components and multiply them together, and their vertical components and multiply them together, and then sum the two quantities together. So this is three times negative five. We're gonna add that with uh, negative two times six. And so this comes out to be, well, negative 15 plus negative 12. What we get out is negative 27. This is the value of u dot v. So here I've got two new vectors, u and v, defined uh, in terms of these uh, unit vectors, the horizontal unit vector i and the vertical unit vector j. Um, so, you know, pause the video, take a moment, and compute the dot product between these two vectors. So here, the vector u, uh, we can also write it in component form as 2 comma 1, right, the coefficient of that vertical unit vector is just 1, and here v can be expressed as negative 1 comma 4. And so if we want to compute u dot v, one way to do this is just to multiply their horizontal components, 2 times negative 1, and add that with mul the multiplication of 1 times 4, uh, their vertical components. And so we get negative 2 plus 4, uh, this comes out to be positive 2. So we have two different definitions for the dot product, and so you know we've already practiced one definition. Um, here, let's go ahead and use the other. So I've got two vectors here, u and v, and I wanna compute u dot v. Um, but here, this time, let's use the definition where we take the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v, multiply those together with cosine of the angle between them. So in this case, well, the magnitude of u is six, or that's the length of that vector there and then the magnitude of v is seven. And then here, we wanna find cosine of the angle between u and v, and the angle between u and v here is, well, we know a straight line makes up an angle of, of 180 degrees. And so if we've got 30 between u and the positive horizontal axis, um, then the angle between these vectors that's left over, u and v, uh, that's 150 degrees. So here we ought to multiply 6 times 7 with cosine of 150 degrees. Well, 6 times 7, that's 42. And then cosine of 150 degrees, well, here if I draw my unit circle out, right, 150 degrees, well, that's 30 degrees shy of our full 180 degree rotation. Um, so I can imagine fitting a 30, 60, 90 triangle there in cosine gives us that horizontal uh, direction of negative square root of 3 over 2. So this is 42 times negative square root of 3 over 2. And so here that really just comes out to be negative 21 square root 3. So earlier I said that the main value of the dot product is that it allows us to find the angle between two vectors. And so let's say I've got these two vectors here, u is equal to two comma five, and v is equal to four comma negative three. So let's draw these two vectors out. Two comma five, uh, looks like it's about two, one, two, three, four, five, about here. So here's u. And then 4 comma negative 3. So here's 4, here's negative 3, so about here. So this is v. And we want to find this angle between the two vectors. I'll call it theta. So the way we can go about doing this is, is we can relate our two definitions of the dot product. So we can take u dot v, we can compute it one way. Uh, our sort of friendly way of, of multiplying the components 
um, the horizontal components together and then the vertical components together and then adding those together. Right, so here that gives us two times four plus five times negative three. In other words, this is eight uh, plus negative 15. That comes out to be negative seven. So this is one way we can compute the dot product and we get out negative seven. And right, the, the, you know, the other way we just define is, is that we can compute u dot v. by taking the magnitude of u, the magnitude of v, multiplying those together, and then again multiplying this with cosine of theta. So here, uh, u dot v, we already know that our result of this is going to, get, going to give us negative seven. So maybe I can fill that in here, so negative seven is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cosine of theta. Okay, so we've got three different quantities that we don't know the value of values of in this equation. Well, how do we find the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v? Those are the size of the vectors u and v. And so here we can just use the Pythagorean theorem. Right, so here uh, the magnitude of this vector u, well, I know it's got a, a horizontal component of two and a vertical component of five. And so I know that two squared plus five squared, if I take the square root of that, that'll give me the length of the hypotenuse of that triangle. In other words, the size or length of that vector u. So the magnitude of u is equal to the square root of, uh, what is this, this is, uh, the vector is two comma five, so it's two squared plus five squared. In other words, the square root of four plus 25, or the square root of 29. And so all we really did here was the Pythagorean theorem. And if we want to compute the magnitude of v, well, we just do the Pythagorean theorem, but with our vector for v. So vector v is the, the it's four comma negative three. So we can apply our Pythagorean theorem again, right? So it's got a horizontal component of four, uh, a vertical component of negative three, and so if we compute uh, the square root of four squared plus negative three squared, what we get out is the, the hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse of that triangle. So we've got 16 plus nine underneath that square root. This is the square root of 25, or in other words, five. And so now our equation comes out to be negative seven is equal to the square root of 29 times five times cosine of theta. And so how do we solve trigonometric equations like this? Well, we can isolate that trigonometric function by dividing both sides by that coefficient there, 20, the, square root of, uh, the square root of 29 times five. And so here, that's telling us that cosine of our angle theta is equal to negative seven divided by, uh, I'm gonna write it like this, five times the square root of 29. And now we just need to figure out this, this angle theta. And so here, uh, if we wanna find the exact value, we, we have to resort to inverse trig. And so this tells us that inverse cosine of negative seven over five square root 29. This is going to be our angle, right? It's gonna give us back an angle uh, between between zero and 180 degrees. Uh, 
which has an output value from cosine of negative seven over five square root 29. And so if we run this through our, our inverse, or we run this through a calculator, we get approximately 105.1 degrees. And so there are other values, there are other angles which cosine gives us output for, but right, cosine inverse is only gonna give us our, our angles between zero and 180 degrees, which is perfectly fine because uh, these two vectors can only be between zero and 180 degrees apart. And so here, that angle theta, what we've really established here is that uh, this angle theta is 105.1 degrees. That's the angle between our two vectors. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this one more time. Um, but for the two vectors, u is equal to negative two comma one and v is equal to negative 10 comma 13. And I definitely encourage you to pause the video and try this example out yourself before we do it together. So here, let's draw a picture. Um, so for the vector u, we've got negative two comma one. So that maybe it's a, so just a rough picture here. Maybe that vector looks like this. And then negative 10 comma 13, uh, maybe that's out here. This is our vector v. And so we're trying to find the angle between these vectors. So this angle here, theta. And so again, we can relate our two definitions of the dot product. Right, so u dot v is equal to, well, we multiply the horizontal components sum that with the product of the vertical components. And this comes out to be 20 plus 13 it gives us 33. And so now we know that this is also going to be equal to how we've defined uh, the dot product in the other way, right? Taking the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v and then multiplying that with cosine of the angle between our two vectors. And so again, now we just have to figure out uh, these magnitudes. And so the magnitude of u, right, again, this is just the Pythagorean theorem, uh, but with uh, the, the horizontal component, negative two, right, we're gonna square that, we're gonna add it with our, our vertical component squared, and so this gives us the square root of two squared is four, one squared is one, this is the square root of five. And then the magnitude of V, well here we're gonna take negative 10 squared, and add that with 13 squared. And so we get the square root of 100 plus 169, or in other words, the square root of 269. So we can't simplify that square root uh, at all. It's a, 269 is a prime number. Um, so that, that's as good as we can get, but that's okay. Uh, we're gonna end up running this all through a calculator anyways, because that's you know, when I take the square root of five and, and multiply with that with the square root of 269 and divide that from 33, and that's not gonna be one of our special right triangle side lengths. So here, this is the square root of five times the square root of 269 times cosine of theta. And so if I wanna solve this trigonometric equation, I wanna get that cosine uh, function alone. So we've got 33, uh, dividing both sides by the square root of five times the square root of 269. Uh, on, on the left side, we get the square root of four, five times the square root of 269 in the denominator of 33. And on the right side, we've just got cosine of theta. So again, we can apply inverse cosine. Right? Inverse cosine of 33 over the square root of five times the square root of 269. And that's gonna give us our angle theta 
It's going to, it's going to give us only the angle uh, solution between 0 and 180 degrees, but again, that's fine because our vectors aren't going to be more than that angle apart from one another. And so this is approximately 25.87 degrees, which looks about right with our, with our rough sketch above. So what can we say about the dot product, the result of the dot product of two vectors, if we know that the two vectors are perpendicular to one another? And so remember that this word perpendicular, this means that uh, they, they sort of meet at this 90 degree angle. There's 90 degrees between the two vectors. So uh, also maybe I should add here that oftentimes when we're talking about vectors, um, instead of using the word perpendicular, we usually use the word orthogonal. So sometimes you might see this instead of perpendicular. Okay, so what can we say about the dot product of two vectors when we know that the, the vectors are perpendicular with one another? Well, we can use our definition of the dot product involving uh, the angle between them. Right, if I take u dot v, that's the same as the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cosine of the angle between them. And here we're assuming that uh, we're talking about two vectors that are meeting at a 90 degree angle. All right, and so what's cosine of 90 degrees? Well, cosine of 90 degrees, that's zero. Right, if I draw out my unit circle, then cosine is the x-coordinate along the unit circle at our angle. And here, if we're at an angle of 90 degrees, then on the unit circle, we're at the point 0, 1. And the x-coordinate of this point is 0. All right, so cosine of 90 is 0. And so as a whole, it doesn't matter what the size of u and v are. Uh, you know, those are going to get multiplied with 0. And so u dot v at the end of the day would be 0. And so we can use this actually to check rather quickly uh, that two vectors, whether or not two vectors are perpendicular. So we can take the dot product of the two vectors. And if that ends up being 0, then we know they're perpendicular. Right, so here we can use the dot product actually. to quickly check if two vectors are perpendicular or orthogonal. And really, we can even use the other definition, right? If I have u dot v, uh, we can multiply their horizontal components a1 and b1, add that with their vertical components a2 and b2, after multiplying a2 and b2. And if we get 0 out from this result, uh, then here this would tell us that u and v are perpendicular. And so here, let's look at these pairs of vectors. Um, and I want to ask, well, which of these pairs are orthogonal with one another? So here, let's just look at u and v as a pair and r and s as a pair. So take a moment, pause the video, and see which ones are orthogonal. OK, so if we take u and v and we take the dot product between them, well, we get 3 times 2 plus 5 times negative 8. And it feels like these are not going to come out to 0. We're going to get 6 plus negative 40. Uh, this is not 0. This is negative 34. So uh, they're, they're not orthogonal. And what about r and s? Well, if we take the dot product of the two vectors r and s, well, we get out 4 times negative 1 plus 2 times 2. This is negative 4 plus 4. This is 0. 
And so these two vectors, these are orthogonal.